Earlier, I mentioned the three server rendering strategies in Next.js. Now let's dive into the first one, static rendering. Static rendering is a server rendering strategy where we generate HTML pages when building our application. Think of it as preparing all your content in advance before any user visits your site. Once built, these pages can be cached by CDNs and served instantly to users. What's really cool about this approach is that the same pre-rendered page can be shared among different users, giving your app a significant performance boost. This makes static rendering perfect for things like blog posts, e-commerce product listings, documentation, and marketing pages. Now that we understand what is static rendering and when to use it, you might be wondering how do we actually use it? Or more specifically, how do we tell Next.js to statically render a specific route? Here's the good news. You don't have to do anything special. Static rendering is the default strategy in the app router. All routes are automatically prepared at build time without any additional setup. Now you might be thinking, hold on, you keep talking about generating HTML at build time, but we haven't built our application, right? We're just running it in development mode. Now that is a great question. Let's talk about the difference between production and development servers. In production, we create one optimized build and deploy it. No on-the-fly changes after deployment. A development server, on the other hand, focuses on the developer experience and we need something more flexible. We need to see our changes immediately in the browser without rebuilding the app every time. That is why the Next.js team made a clever decision. In production, pages are pre-rendered once during the build, but in development, pages are pre-rendered on every request. Visit the home page, it is pre-rendered and served. Refresh, pre-rendered again and served. This ensures you always see your latest code changes in every request. Next.js also displays a static route indicator during development to help you identify which routes are static. I will say though, don't worry too much about static generation during development. What really matters is understanding how it works when you build your app for production. Before we dive into the build process, let's stop the dev server and clean up by deleting the .next folder that was generated during development. Next, let's add a link to our about page from the root page.tsx file. So duplicate the link to dashboard and change href as well as the text. In the about page, let's also render the current time. So about page within curly braces, new date dot to locale time string. This will help prove a point later. Now in the terminal, run the command npm run build. This creates an optimized production build of our application. The output goes into the dot next folder again, but this time the contents will be quite different from what we saw during development. There is quite a bit to unpack here, so let's start with what we see in the terminal. You'll notice three columns showing information about each route. Route, size, and first load JS. Route is pretty straightforward. It is the route itself. So slash about and slash dashboard, for example. Size shows how much data needs to be downloaded when navigating to that corresponding page client side in the browser. First load JS tells us how much gets downloaded when initially loading a page from the server. Let's break down these numbers. First, there's a shared bundle that all routes use. It includes your global CSS, runtime code, framework code, vendor code like React for example, and some route related code. This shared bundle comes in at 105 KB. Looking at individual routes, a root page from page.tsx in the app folder is 8.4 KB. However, when someone visits the homepage, they will download both this and the shared bundle totaling 114 KB. Next.js also generates a 404 not found page automatically. It is tiny at 979 bytes, but needs 106 KB with the shared bundle. The about page, which is a server component, is quite lightweight at 136 bytes for client-side navigation and 105 KB for server loads. The dashboard page, which is a client component, is slightly larger at 370 bytes and 106 KB from the server. Next to each route, you will see some symbols. And at the bottom is an Next.js legend showing how each route is rendered. Our root route, page.tsx, has a hollow circle indicating static rendering. The same goes for not found, 
about and dashboard as well. They all are pre-rendered at build time as static HTML. These indicators are super helpful when you're getting started with Next.js and want to understand what's happening under the hood. Now, let's dive into the build output. Next.js puts everything in the .next folder, which has all the files needed to serve our application to the browser. We will focus on two main folders, server and static. Inside the server folder, there is an app folder that matches our application's route structure. Let me show you the important files you'll find here. First up, we have the HTML files. See how our build info shows the root page as static? You'll find that as index.html within the app folder. Same story with our not found page, not found.html. We've also got an about.html with its h1html about page and the timestamp, and dashboard.html with its heading, input, and paragraph. You might wonder why we see HTML for client components. That is because even client components are pre-rendered as an optimization step, something we already discussed when learning about client components. But HTML files are in the whole story. Each route also gets what is called an RSC payload. For example, about.rsc for the about server component and dashboard.rsc for the dashboard client component. These files with a special JSON format are generated by React for each route and represent your virtual DOM in a super compact way using abbreviations and internal references. For our server components, this payload includes the actual rendered result, like the h1 tag with about page text in it. Client components work a bit differently. Their payload has placeholders showing where the client components should go, plus references to their JavaScript files. Our dashboard routes payload, for example, points to where its component code lives. Static chunks app dashboard page hyphen td9503b.js. Next to the server folder, we've got this static folder. Dig into static chunks app and you'll find all our routes. The dashboard folder here has that component code file we saw referenced in the RSE payload, the stuff needed for reconciliation and hydration. The h1 tag, dashboard, input, and so on. Now that we understand the build output, let's serve our application from the .next folder. Run the command npm run start. Visit localhost 3000, and with your dev tools open, do an empty cache and hard reload. Look at the different resources that get downloaded. First thing to check is this localhost request. It is coming in as a document type. This is the index.html we saw earlier in the server app folder. Click on preview, and you can see the preview of the HTML page. The response shows you the HTML code. Apart from the HTML, I want to draw your attention to the two RSC files. Dashboard underscore RSC and about underscore RSC. These are essential for building the UI on the client side when we navigate to slash about or slash dashboard using the links. There's also the dashboard component code page hyphen dd9503b.js that has been downloaded. Here's what's cool. Clear your network tab and click around to about and dashboard. So about component and dashboard component. Notice how they render instantly without hitting the server. That is because the initial load included everything required for client-side navigation. So we already have everything we need right in the browser. But wait, how did Next.js know to send us the about and dashboard stuff before we even clicked anything? That is thanks to a feature called prefetching, a clever technique that preloads routes in the background as their links become visible. For static routes like ours, Next.js automatically prefetches and caches the whole route. So when our homepage loads with the links to about and dashboard, Next.js is already prefetching about and dashboard routes for instant navigation. But what about the about.html and dashboard.html files we saw earlier in the server folder? Well, when you type the URL directly or hit refresh in the browser, that is when you get the full HTML document straight from the server. So when you navigate to localhost 3000 slash about, this time you see the about document, which is HTML for slash dashboard with the HTML, 
you will also receive the code needed for hydration. Oh, and remember the timestamp we added to the About page? Notice how it stays the same no matter how many times you refresh. That is because it was locked in when we built the application. We will explore more about rendering, but here is what we've learned. Static rendering is a strategy where the HTML is generated at build time. Along with the HTML, RSC payloads for components and JavaScript chunks for client-side hydration are created. Direct route visits serve HTML files, while client-side navigation uses RSC payloads and JavaScript chunks without additional server requests. This makes static rendering excellent for performance, especially in blogs, documentation, and marketing pages. I know this is a lot to take in. If some parts feel fuzzy, I would encourage you to try this out yourself. Run the code, watch the network tab, and experiment. The best way to understand these concepts is to see them in action. My goal isn't just to show you how to use Next.js, but to help you understand why things work the way they do. Supporting the channel is free. Please like and subscribe. It helps a lot.